Welcome back students. In this lecture we're going to talk about why you might want to use GeoServer because it may come as a surprise to you especially if you come from the commercial GIS world and if you haven't taken my other courses on WebGIS and spatial databases you don't actually need a special geospatial data server like GeoServer or ArcServer to serve geospatial content over the web. Your web map or a desktop GIS client can connect directly to a spatial database such as PostGIS and retrieve spatial data without anything other than a standard database server and a server-side programming language such as PHP or Python. And this works great for smaller projects, especially those internal to your organization. It does, however, require that you have a knowledge of spatial SQL and a server-side programming language. Nevertheless, there are some use cases where you might want to consider using GeoServer. One of the most important is the case where you want to make your data available to others to use in their own projects. Maybe you've collected wetland locations over your whole county and you want to allow others to see those locations, so you create your own web map. Other people can see your web map, but if for some reason they wanted to include that information in their own web maps, they will need to access your PostGIS database, and you probably don't want to go around providing that to everyone. Even though in PostGIS you could limit what permissions they have, and that's what they're allowed to do with your data. In this case, you may be better off publishing your data on GeoServer, and then they could use it without directly accessing your database. You might only allow public access to a WMS layer that allows displaying data, but only allow feature level access via a WFS service to a few people. Or you may want to charge for that access for people who want to perform spatial analysis with your data. Another use case would be if you want to publish raster data. It's not impossible to do this without GeoServer, but your options are really limited relative to what you can do via GeoServer. This is especially true if you have large amounts of data, even vector data, and especially if you can cache the data in advance. This is not always possible, but when it is, you can see significant performance gains. GeoServer has some significant security advantages as well. In my courses on WebGIS, I discuss and address several common security issues, and I think that it's possible to build reasonably secure web pages using those methods. But internet security is a huge subject, and I prefer to spend my time learning GIS and programming rather than going down the rabbit hole of computer security. The bottom line is that nothing that you publish to the internet is ever truly secure. It's just a matter of how hard you want to make someone work to get to your data compared to what your data is worth to them. If you publish the blueprints to Fort Knox, someone would probably try to hack it. If you publish the boundaries of wetlands, maybe nobody cares enough to try to steal it especially when you are making them available for free. Nevertheless, if you create a web map that uses data from GeoServer rather than directly accessing data from a PostGIS database through a SQL query, it will likely be more secure, if only because there's another layer of software that they have to get through before accessing your database. And as I mentioned, if you use GeoServer to serve geospatial data for a web page, you won't have to know much SQL and you won't have to learn a server-side programming language, such as PHP. You will probably still need to know JavaScript and a web mapping API. You really can't get away from that, but it will save you some of the learning curve. In fact, GeoServer can serve data straight from a shapefile or geo package, so you don't need to set up a database server at all. If you have a small project and you just want to make some spatial data available on the web and don't want to deal with the hassle of Having a database server, you could simply pay somebody $20 a month or something to host a GeoServer instance for you, upload a shapefile to it, and be serving data in only a couple hours. I would argue, however, that the advantages of a spatial database are astronomical and well worth the effort to learn and understand for 99% of the people involved with geospatial data. Nevertheless, with GeoServer, it's possible to do without. Okay, thanks for listening, and in the next lecture, we will install GeoServer and then get started with some real work.